They laughed at her for adopting a black boy named Lucas. But years later, those same people are on their knees begging for his help. What has driven them to such desperation? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. In a small, quiet town where everyone knew everyone else's business, Abigail Walker made a decision that would change her life forever. She adopted a beautiful baby boy named Lucas. His dark skin stood out in the sea of pale faces that filled the town, and whispers began to spread like wildfire. Abigail held Lucas close as she walked down Main Street, her heart swelling with love for her new son. She couldn't help but notice the stares and hushed conversations that followed her. Some folks even crossed the street to avoid them. Did you hear about Abigail? Mrs. Thompson whispered to her friend at the grocery store. She's gone and adopted one of those colored babies. Can you imagine? The words stung, but Abigail held her head high. She looked down at Lucas, his big brown eyes gazing up at her with pure innocence. He had no idea of the cruel world that awaited him, and Abigail vowed to protect him with every fiber of her being. At church on Sunday, Abigail sat in her usual pew with Lucas nestled in her arms. The usual friendly greetings were replaced with awkward silences and judgmental glances. Even Pastor Johnson seemed uncomfortable during his sermon about loving thy neighbor. But Abigail refused to let their narrow-mindedness shake her. She knew in her heart that love had no color. As she rocked Lucas to sleep that night, she whispered, You are my son, and I will love you forever. No matter what anyone says or thinks. Days turned into weeks and the gossip didn't die down. Abigail's friends stopped calling, and invitations to social events mysteriously disappeared. But with each passing day, her bond with Lucas grew stronger. One afternoon, as Abigail pushed Lucas in his stroller through the park, she overheard a group of women talking. It's just not natural, one said. What was she thinking? Abigail's eyes filled with tears, but she blinked them away. She looked down at Lucas, who was cooing happily oblivious to the harsh words. His joy was pure and untainted by the world's cruelty. In that moment, Abigail knew she had made the right choice. She would face any challenge, bear any burden, to give this precious child the love and life he deserved. As Lucas grew from a baby into a young boy, the whispers and sideways glances that had always followed him and Abigail became more noticeable. His curious brown eyes began to pick up on the way people treated them differently and questions started to form in his young mind. Abigail, ever patient and loving, made sure their home was filled with warmth and acceptance. She read Lucas' stories about kindness and bravery, teaching him that true strength came from the heart. Love is the most powerful force in the world, she would tell him, her eyes twinkling with affection. When Lucas turned five, it was time for him to start school. Abigail walked him to the classroom, her heart heavy with worry, but her face bright with encouragement. Remember, sweetheart, she said, kneeling to straighten his collar. You are smart, kind, and loved. That's all that matters. But school proved to be a harsh awakening for Lucas. The other children stared and whispered. Some refused to play with him at recess. One day, a boy named Tommy pushed Lucas down and sneered, My dad says you don't belong here. Lucas came home that day with tears in his eyes and mud on his clothes. Abigail's heart broke as she held him close. Why don't they like me, Mom? He sobbed into her shoulder. Abigail took a deep breath, fighting back her own tears. She gently lifted Lucas's chin so he could see her face. Some people are afraid of what's different, she explained softly. But that's their problem, not yours. You are perfect just the way you are. She wiped his tears away with her thumb. The best thing we can do is to show them how wrong they are. We'll do it with kindness and love, even when it's hard. Lucas sniffled, his big brown eyes wide with trust. How do we do that? Abigail smiled, her heart swelling with pride for her brave little boy. By being the best person you can be. By forgiving those who are unkind and always choosing love over hate. It's not easy but it's the right thing to do. As the years passed, 
Lucas's intelligence and determination began to shine through despite the coldness of the town. In school, he excelled in every subject, his quick mind and eagerness to learn setting him apart from his classmates. His teachers couldn't help but notice his brilliance, even as they struggled with their own biases. Mrs. Willow, his science teacher, was particularly impressed. Lucas, she said one day after class, your understanding of biology is remarkable. Have you ever thought about a career in medicine? Lucas's eyes lit up at the suggestion. He had always felt a deep desire to help others, a trait nurtured by Abigail's loving example. The idea of becoming a doctor suddenly seemed like the perfect way to channel his passion. That evening, Lucas burst through the front door, his excitement palpable. Mom, I know what I want to be when I grow up. Abigail looked up from her sewing, a warm smile spreading across her face. What's that, sweetheart? A doctor, Lucas exclaimed, his eyes shining. I want to help people get better, just like you always taught me. Abigail's heart swelled with pride. She set aside her work and pulled Lucas into a tight hug. That's wonderful, Lucas. You have such a big heart, and you're so smart. You'd make an amazing doctor. But even as Lucas's dreams took shape, the town's judgment continued. At school, he often found himself eating lunch alone or being picked last for teams in gym class. The other kids, influenced by their parents' whispers, kept their distance. One evening, Lucas sat at the kitchen table, his shoulders slumped as he pushed his dinner around his plate. Mom, he said quietly, do you think I can really become a doctor, even if, even if no one here believes in me? Abigail reached across the table and took his hand. Lucas, listen to me, she said, her voice firm but gentle. You can do anything you set your mind to. The people in this town, they don't define who you are or what you can achieve. Your kind heart and brilliant mind, those are what matter. She squeezed his hand, her eyes filled with love and determination. It won't be easy, but I believe in you, and I'll be right here, supporting you every step of the way. Lucas looked up at his mother, drawing strength from her unwavering faith in him. He nodded, a new resolve forming in his heart. I'll do it, Mom. I'll work hard and become the best doctor I can be. I'll show them all that it doesn't matter where I came from or what I look like. What matters is how much I care. Months turned into years and Lucas now will enter his new journey. Lucas stood at the bus stop, his suitcase packed and ready for his journey to medical school. Abigail held him tight, her eyes glistening with tears of pride and sadness. You're going to do great things, Lucas, she whispered, her voice trembling slightly. He pulled back, looking into his mother's eyes. I'll make you proud, Mom. I promise. As the bus pulled away, Abigail waved until it disappeared around the corner. The town seemed quieter without Lucas, and Abigail felt the weight of loneliness settle on her shoulders. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months. Abigail threw herself into her work at the local diner, finding solace in the routine. She cherished Lucas's phone calls and letters, each one a reminder of the bright future he was building. The townsfolk, who had once gossiped incessantly about Abigail and Lucas, slowly turned their attention elsewhere. Lucas became a distant memory to most, his absence dulling the sharp edges of their prejudice. Yet Abigail remained an outsider, her choice to adopt Lucas still a topic of hushed conversations. Mrs. Smith, a regular at the diner, would often shake her head when Abigail served her coffee. Such a shame she'd mutter, just loud enough for Abigail to hear. That boy's probably forgotten all about you by now. But Abigail held her head high, her faith in Lucas unwavering. He's doing what he was meant to do, she'd reply with a gentle smile. And one day, he'll come back and help this town. Just you wait and see. In the quiet evenings, Abigail would sit on the porch looking at the stars and imagining Lucas studying late into the night. She found peace in these moments, knowing that her son was out there, chasing his dreams and becoming the man she always knew he could be. Years have passed. Lucas is now a doctor. Lucas stepped off the bus, his heart racing with a mix of excitement and apprehension. The familiar sights and sounds of his hometown washed over him, stirring up memories both sweet and painful. He clutched his medical bag tightly, a symbol of all he had achieved. 
As he walked down Main Street, Lucas couldn't help but notice the sideways glances and hushed whispers that followed him. Some things, it seemed, hadn't changed at all. With determination in his eyes, Lucas unlocked the door to his newly rented space. The small clinic was modest but clean, a beacon of hope in his mind. He had poured his savings into this dream, believing that his service would speak louder than prejudice. Welcome to Heartland Health Clinic, he murmured to himself, running his hand along the freshly painted walls. Word spread quickly about the new doctor in town. At first, curiosity brought a trickle of patients through his doors. Mrs. Johnson, battling arthritis, was one of the first to visit. Well, I suppose you're a real doctor now, she said, eyeing him suspiciously. Lucas smiled warmly. Yes, ma'am. I'm here to help in any way I can. As days passed, however, the initial curiosity waned. Lucas found himself spending long hours alone in the clinic, waiting for patients who never came. The few who did arrive often left without treatment, muttering excuses about seeking a second opinion. One afternoon, Mr. Thompson, the town's hardware store owner, came in with a nasty cut on his hand. Lucas moved to examine it, but Mr. Thompson pulled away. I don't know, he said, his voice laced with doubt. Maybe I should see Dr. Miller instead. No offense, but, well, you know. Lucas felt a familiar ache in his chest. Mr. Thompson, I assure you, I'm fully qualified to treat your injury. But his words fell on deaf ears. Mr. Thompson left, leaving Lucas alone once again. As he locked up that evening, Lucas caught sight of his reflection in the window. The eager young doctor stared back at him, his dreams of acceptance and service seeming further away than ever. The harsh reality settled over him like a heavy blanket. His hard-earned qualifications couldn't erase years of prejudice. Lucas arrived at the clinic each morning with a hopeful heart, despite the emptiness that often greeted him. He'd straighten the magazines in the waiting room, check his supplies, and prepare for patients who rarely came. Abigail, ever supportive, would arrive shortly after, her gentle smile a balm to his weary spirit. Good morning, sweetheart, she'd say, hanging up her coat. Ready for another day? Lucas would nod, forcing a smile. Always, Mom. You never know who might need our help today. As the days turned into weeks, the clinic remained eerily quiet. The few patients who did come were mostly travelers passing through town or the rare, open-minded local. Lucas treasured these opportunities to practice his craft, pouring his heart into each interaction. One afternoon, a young girl stumbled in with her worried mother. The child's arm was swollen and bent at an odd angle. Please, the mother pleaded. She fell from a tree. I... I know you're a real doctor. Can you help her? Lucas's heart swelled with compassion. Of course, he said softly, guiding them to the exam room. He treated the girl's broken arm with gentle expertise, his kind demeanor soothing her tears. As they left, the mother whispered, Thank you, Dr. Lucas. You're a blessing to this town, whether they know it or not. These moments kept Lucas going, but they were few and far between. Most days, he and Abigail sat in the quiet clinic, their hopes dwindling with each passing hour. Maybe we should think about moving to a bigger city, Abigail suggested one particularly slow afternoon. Somewhere they'll appreciate your skills. Lucas shook his head, his voice tinged with determination and a hint of sadness. This is our home, Mom. These people, they're our neighbors. They just need time to see past their prejudices. But even as he spoke the words, Lucas felt the familiar ache of rejection. He thought of Mr. Thompson, who'd rather risk infection than let Lucas treat his cut. He remembered Mrs. Peterson crossing the street to avoid walking past the clinic. Each memory stung, a reminder of the long road ahead. Yet Lucas persevered. He chose to focus on the lives he could touch, the handful of patients who trusted him. It wasn't the thriving practice he'd dreamed of, but it was a start. And with Abigail by his side, he found the strength to face each new day, holding on to hope that someday the town would see him for who he truly was. Not just a black doctor, but a skilled and compassionate healer. Mr. Davies stood at the front of the town hall, his voice booming with disdain. 
And what about that so-called clinic? He sneered, his face twisted in disgust. I wouldn't trust that boy with a paper cut, let alone my health. Laughter rippled through the crowd, and Lucas, who had slipped into the back of the room hoping to understand the town's needs better, felt each chuckle like a knife to his heart. He stood frozen, his hands clenched at his sides as Mr. Davies continued his tirade. We don't need his kind here pretending to be a doctor, Mr. Davies spat. Who knows what he's really up to in that clinic of his? Lucas's cheeks burned with shame and anger, but he remained silent. He'd learned long ago that speaking up often made things worse. As the meeting adjourned, he slipped out quietly, his shoulders hunched under the weight of the town's judgment. Back at the clinic, Abigail found Lucas sitting in the dark, his head in his hands. Oh, sweetheart, she sighed, wrapping her arms around him. I heard about the meeting. Don't let their words get to you. Lucas looked up, his eyes shining with unshed tears. But mom, how long do we have to wait? When will they see me for who I am, not what I look like? Abigail cupped his face in her hands, her voice soft but firm. Your work will be valued when the time is right, Lucas. You have a gift, and someday they'll see that. Lucas nodded, but doubt gnawed at him. He wondered if the town would ever truly accept him, if his dream of helping his community would ever become a reality. The clinic stood as a testament to his perseverance, but also as a painful reminder of the long road ahead. Lucas sat at his desk in the quiet clinic, staring at the empty waiting room. The silence was deafening, a constant reminder of the town's rejection. He sighed heavily, running his hands through his hair in frustration. Another day, another empty office, he muttered to himself. Abigail walked in carrying a tray with two steaming mugs of tea. She set one down in front of Lucas, her eyes full of concern. I know it's hard, sweetheart, she said softly. But remember, change takes time. Lucas looked up at his mother, his eyes filled with a mix of gratitude and weariness. I know, Mom. But how much time? It's been months, and still, hardly anyone comes. Abigail sat down beside him, placing a comforting hand on his arm. The town's been set in its ways for a long time. It won't change overnight. But you're doing good work here, Lucas. Don't give up. Despite his mother's encouragement, Lucas couldn't shake off the feeling of defeat. He watched as people drove past his clinic, heading towards the highway that led to the bigger hospitals miles away. It stung to know they'd rather travel for hours than give him a chance. But Lucas wasn't one to sit idle. If the town wouldn't come to him, he'd use this time to prepare for when they might need him. He threw himself into improving the clinic, ordering new equipment, and expanding his medical library. Every evening after closing up the near-empty clinic, Lucas would sit for hours, poring over medical journals and attending online seminars. He was determined to be the best doctor he could be, ready for whatever medical emergency might arise. If they won't give me a chance now, he thought to himself, I'll make sure I'm more than prepared when they finally do. Days turned into weeks and still the clinic remained quiet. But Lucas persevered, driven by a mix of determination and hope. He held on to his mother's words, reminding himself that change takes time. And so he waited, prepared, and hoped for the day when the town might finally see him for who he truly was a dedicated doctor ready to help his community. As the days passed, dark clouds began to gather on the horizon. The local weather station issued warnings of an approaching storm, predicting heavy rains and strong winds. Lucas watched the forecast with growing concern, his medical instincts kicking in. Mom, this storm looks serious, he said to Abigail as they watched the news together. We need to prepare the clinic. Abigail nodded, her face etched with worry. You're right, honey. We should warn people, too. Lucas spent the next day calling the few patients he had, urging them to take precautions. Stock up on supplies, secure your homes, and be ready for possible flooding, he advised each one. However, when he ventured into town to spread the word, he was met with indifference and skepticism. It's just a bit of rain, Mr. Wilson, the grocery store owner, scoffed. We've had storms before. Lucas tried to explain the severity of the situation, but his words fell on deaf ears. 
The townspeople's distrust of him ran too deep, even in the face of potential danger. Back at the clinic, Lucas and Abigail worked tirelessly to prepare. They boarded up windows, moved important equipment to higher ground, and stocked up on emergency supplies. I hope we're overreacting, Lucas said as he hammered another board into place. Abigail squeezed his shoulder. Better safe than sorry, sweetie. We need to be ready to help if things get bad. As the sky darkened and the wind picked up, Lucas couldn't shake off his worry for the town. Despite their rejection, he felt responsible for their well-being. He and Abigail made one last check of their preparations, then settled in to wait out the storm. Outside, the first heavy raindrops began to fall, and the wind howled ominously. The storm was upon them, and Lucas feared that many in the town were woefully unprepared for what was to come. The storm descended upon the town with a fury that caught everyone off guard. Rain lashed against windows and rooftops, driven by howling winds that bent trees and tore at buildings. Lucas and Abigail watched from the clinic's reinforced windows, their hearts heavy with worry for their neighbors. It's worse than we thought, Lucas murmured, his voice barely audible over the storm's roar. As the night wore on, the situation rapidly deteriorated. The river, swollen by the relentless downpour, burst its banks. Water rushed through the streets, turning them into raging torrents. Houses and shops that had stood for generations were now islands in a sea of muddy water. Lucas and Abigail could only watch in horror as familiar landmarks disappeared beneath the rising flood. The grocery store where Mr. Wilson had dismissed Lucas's warnings was now partially submerged. The town square, usually bustling with activity, was unrecognizable under several feet of water. Oh, Lucas, Abigail gasped, tears welling in her eyes. Those poor people. As dawn broke, the full extent of the damage became clear. The storm had ravaged the town, leaving destruction in its wake. Homes were damaged or destroyed, their contents ruined by the floodwaters. Businesses that formed the backbone of the community lay in ruins, but the worst was yet to come. As Lucas surveyed the scene from the clinic's upper floor, he realized with growing dread that the town was cut off. The main road leading to the nearest city was washed out, a gaping chasm where the bridge once stood. Other routes were blocked by fallen trees or submerged underwater too deep to pass. Mom, we're isolated, Lucas said, his voice tight with concern. The hospital in the city? No one can reach it. Abigail's face paled as the implications sank in. With the town cut off from outside help, any medical emergencies would have to be handled locally, and the only doctor in town was the one they had all rejected. As they looked out at the devastated landscape, Lucas and Abigail knew that their small clinic might be the only hope for their stranded neighbors. The town that had shunned them now desperately needed their help. As the floodwaters slowly receded, leaving behind a muddy, debris-strewn landscape, the town's residents breathed a collective sigh of relief. But their respite was short-lived. Within days, a new threat emerged, more insidious than the storm itself. It started with Mr. Wilson, the grocer. He stumbled into Lucas's clinic, his face pale and sweaty, complaining of severe stomach pains. By nightfall, three more townspeople had arrived with similar symptoms. Lucas worked tirelessly, treating each patient with care and expertise despite their past treatment of him. As the week progressed, more and more people fell ill. The symptoms were alarming, high fever, uncontrollable vomiting, and severe dehydration. Lucas realized with growing dread that they were facing an outbreak. The contaminated floodwater had spread a mysterious disease throughout the town. Word spread quickly, and soon Lucas's small clinic was overwhelmed. People who had once crossed the street to avoid him now lined up outside, desperate for help. The waiting room overflowed, and makeshift beds filled every available space. Abigail worked alongside her son, offering comfort to frightened patients and assisting where she could. Her kind words and gentle touch brought solace to many who had previously shunned her. We need more supplies, Lucas told his mother, his voice strained with exhaustion. And I can't treat everyone alone. But help seemed out of reach. The roads leading to the larger hospitals in the city remained impassable, cut off by the storm's destruction. The town was isolated, 
left to face this crisis on its own. As the number of sick continued to rise, fear gripped the community. Neighbors who had once gossiped about Lucas and Abigail now turned to them as their only hope. The clinic became the heart of the town, a beacon of light in the darkness of uncertainty. Lucas worked around the clock, his medical training put to the ultimate test. He treated patients, researched the illness, and tried desperately to find a way to contain its spread. Despite his exhaustion, he never turned anyone away, regardless of how they had treated him in the past. The town that had once rejected Lucas now depended on him entirely. As the crisis deepened, the true strength of his character shone through, illuminating the darkness of prejudice that had shadowed his life for so long. As the epidemic spread through the town, Lucas found himself at the center of a crisis he never imagined. The very people who had shunned him for years now turned to him as their only hope. Families who once crossed the street to avoid him now knocked desperately on his clinic door, pleading for help. Lucas stood at the entrance of his small clinic watching as a line of worried faces formed outside. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for the challenge ahead. Despite the years of prejudice and rejection he had endured, there was no hesitation in his heart. He knew what he had to do. We're opening the doors to everyone, Lucas announced to his mother, Abigail, who stood beside him with a look of concern and pride. Are you sure, honey? Abigail asked, touching his arm gently. After everything they've done? Lucas nodded, his eyes filled with determination. They need help, Mom. That's all that matters now. As the first patients entered, Lucas greeted them with the same warmth and professionalism he had always shown. He treated each person with care, regardless of how they had treated him in the past. Children who had once teased him now looked up at him with trust in their fevered eyes. Adults who had whispered cruel words behind his back now thanked him profusely as he tended to their loved ones. The clinic quickly filled to capacity. Lucas worked tirelessly, moving from patient to patient, diagnosing symptoms and administering treatments. His years of medical training were put to the ultimate test as he battled against time and limited resources. As the day wore on, Lucas's compassion never wavered. He treated each patient with the same level of care and attention, his kindness a stark contrast to the treatment he had received for so long. The clinic became a place of healing, not just for bodies, but for the town's collective soul. As the epidemic worsened, Lucas knew he needed to act quickly. He set up an emergency response system, turning his small clinic into a makeshift command center. With a steady stream of patients arriving, he realized he couldn't do it alone. We need help, Lucas told Abigail, his voice filled with urgency. Can you gather some volunteers? Abigail nodded, her eyes shining with determination. I'll find anyone who's well enough to lend a hand. Within hours, a group of volunteers, mostly those who had already recovered from the illness, arrived at the clinic. Lucas quickly organized them, assigning tasks based on their abilities. Some helped with basic patient care, while others ran errands for supplies. Remember, wash your hands often and wear masks, Lucas instructed the volunteers. We can't afford to lose any of you to this illness. Abigail took charge of organizing supplies, creating an efficient system to track what they had and what they needed. She moved through the clinic, her gentle presence bringing comfort to frightened patients. You're doing great, sweetie, she said to a young girl as she helped her sip some water. Dr. Lucas will make you feel better soon. Day and night blurred together as Lucas and Abigail worked tirelessly. They caught naps when they could, but the constant influx of patients kept them busy. Despite their exhaustion, neither complained. They knew they were the town's only hope. As word spread about the clinic's efforts, more people arrived seeking help. The clinic became a beacon of hope in the crisis-stricken town. Families huddled in the waiting room, their faces etched with worry but also relief at finally finding help. Lucas moved from patient to patient, his calm demeanor a source of strength for everyone around him. He treated each person with care and respect, regardless of their past treatment of him. His kindness and skill began to change hearts one patient at a time. As the epidemic continued to ravage the town, a familiar face appeared at the clinic's door. It was Mr. Davis's wife, her ease wide with panic and her voice trembling. Please, we need help. 
It's my husband. He's very sick, she pleaded. Lucas felt a jolt of surprise. Mr. Davies, the man who had been his most vocal critic, was now in need of his help. Without hesitation, Lucas grabbed his medical bag and followed Mrs. Davies to their home. When they arrived, Lucas found Mr. Davies in a pitiful state. The once proud and arrogant man was now pale and weak, lying in bed with sweat beating on his forehead. His breath came in short, labored gasps. Dr. Lucas, Mr. Davies wheezed, his eyes filled with fear and desperation. I know I don't deserve your help, but please, save me. Lucas knelt beside the bed, his face a mask of professional calm. Mr. Davies, I'm here to help you. I'll do everything I can. As Lucas began his examination, Mr. Davies grabbed his arm weakly. I'm sorry, he whispered, for everything. I was wrong about you. Lucas nodded, his heart softening at the man's vulnerability. Let's focus on getting you better, he said gently. With careful hands and a compassionate touch, Lucas tended to Mr. Davies. He administered medication, set up an IV for hydration, and explained the treatment plan to Mrs. Davies. Throughout it all, he treated Mr. Davies with the same care and respect he showed all his patients. Hours passed as Lucas monitored Mr. Davies' condition. The older man drifted in and out of consciousness, muttering apologies and words of gratitude in his feverish state. Lucas stayed by his side, checking his vitals and adjusting his treatment as needed. As dawn broke, Mr. Davies' fever finally began to break. Lucas let out a sigh of relief, feeling the weight of the night's vigil lift from his shoulders. As the disease continued to spread through the town, Lucas found himself facing an overwhelming task. The small clinic that had once stood nearly empty was now bursting at the seams with sick patients. Every bed was filled, and makeshift cots lined the hallways. Lucas moved from patient to patient, his brow furrowed with concentration and worry. He hadn't slept in days, and exhaustion was beginning to take its toll. His hands shook slightly as he checked temperatures and administered medication, but he refused to give up. We're running low on antibiotics, Abigail said softly appearing at his side with a clipboard. Her eyes were tired, but her voice remained steady, and were almost out of IV bags. Lucas nodded, his heart heavy. We'll have to make do with what we have, he replied, his voice hoarse from overuse. Maybe we can dilute some of the medications to stretch them further. As they spoke, more people stumbled through the clinic doors, their faces pale and drawn with sickness. Lucas felt a wave of despair wash over him, but he pushed it aside. These people needed him, and he wouldn't let them down. Mom, he said, turning to Abigail, can you start triaging the new arrivals? I'll finish up here and then join you. Abigail squeezed his arm gently. Of course, sweetheart. We'll get through this together. As the day wore on, Lucas and Abigail worked side by side, their movements becoming a well-choreographed dance of care and compassion. They comforted the scared, treated the sick, and offered hope to those who had none. Despite the exhaustion that weighed on him like a heavy blanket, Lucas refused to slow down. He knew that every minute counted, every life was precious. The very people who had once shunned him now looked to him as their savior, and he was determined not to let them down. As night fell, Abigail brought Lucas a cup of lukewarm coffee. You need to rest, she said gently, worry etched on her face. Lucas shook his head, his ease never leaving the patient he was tending to. I can't, Mom. They need me. Abigail placed a hand on his shoulder, her touch full of love and support. I know, sweetie, but you can't help anyone if you collapse. Just take a few minutes, please. Lucas hesitated, then nodded. He knew his mother was right. As he sipped the coffee, he looked around the crowded clinic, his heart swelling with a mix of determination and hope. They had a long way to go, but he wouldn't give up. Not now, not ever. As the crisis deepened, more townspeople flocked to Lucas's clinic. The waiting room was packed, with people spilling out onto the street. Many of those who came wore expressions of shame and regret their eyes downcast as they approached the very man they had shunned for so long. One woman, her face pale with fever, reached out to touch Lucas's arm as he passed. Dr. Lucas, 
she said softly, her voice trembling. I'm so sorry for how we treated you. I should have known better. Lucas paused for a moment, his tired eyes meeting hers. He gave her a small, gentle smile. It's okay, he said, his voice kind but firm. Let's focus on getting you better. Without another word, he moved on to check her vital signs. Throughout the day, similar scenes played out. People who had once crossed the street to avoid Lucas now sought his help desperately. Some muttered quiet apologies as he examined them, while others simply looked at him with newfound respect and gratitude. Abigail watched her son work tirelessly, her heart swelling with pride. She saw the weight of the town's past treatment in the slump of his shoulders, but also the strength of his character and the gentleness of his hands as he cared for each patient. During a rare quiet moment, Abigail pulled Lucas aside. You're doing the right thing, sweetheart, she said, her eyes shining with unshed tears. I'm so proud of you. Lucas leaned against the wall, exhaustion etched on his face. I know, Mom, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. But it's hard. All those years of rejection. And now this. Abigail wrapped her arms around her son, holding him close. I know it's hard, she murmured, but you're showing them what true forgiveness looks like. You're living out everything we've believed in. Lucas nodded, drawing strength from his mother's embrace. As he pulled away, he saw Mr. Davies being wheeled in on a stretcher, looking worse than before. The man who had once been his loudest critic now lay helpless before him. Taking a deep breath, Lucas straightened his shoulders and walked towards Mr. Davies. He knew the road ahead would be long and difficult but he was determined to see it through. With each step, he chose forgiveness over resentment, compassion over anger. It wasn't easy, but Lucas knew it was the right thing to do. As Lucas tended to the endless stream of patients, his keen medical mind began to notice a pattern. The symptoms, while severe, followed a consistent progression. He spent sleepless nights poring over medical journals and consulting with colleagues via phone, desperately searching for a solution. On the third day of the crisis, Lucas had a breakthrough. He burst into the makeshift ward where Abigail was changing IV bags. Mom, he said, his eyes bright with hope despite the dark circles beneath them. I think I've figured out a treatment plan. Abigail's face lit up. That's wonderful, sweetheart. What do we need to do? Lucas quickly explained his idea, outlining a combination of medications and supportive care that he believed would stabilize the patients and help their bodies fight off the infection. Abigail listened intently, nodding as she absorbed the information. Together, they sprang into action. Lucas began administering the new treatment to the most critical patients, while Abigail organized volunteers to help distribute medication and care instructions to those with milder symptoms. The next few days were a blur of activity. Lucas moved from bed to bed, adjusting treatments and monitoring progress. Abigail coordinated supplies and managed the growing team of volunteers. Slowly but surely, they began to see results. Mr. Davies, who had been on the brink of death, opened his eyes for the first time in days. Other patients who had been delirious with fever began to show signs of improvement. The number of new cases arriving at the clinic started to decline. As word spread about the effective treatment, hope began to return to the town. People who had been hiding in their homes terrified of the mysterious illness started to emerge. They came to the clinic not just for treatment, but to offer help. Lucas watched with a mixture of exhaustion and joy as more and more patients were discharged, weak but recovering. He saw tears of gratitude in the eyes of family members who had feared the worst. The weight of years of rejection began to lift from his shoulders, replaced by a sense of purpose and belonging. As the days passed, Mr. Davies slowly regained his strength. The illness had taken a toll on his body, leaving him weak and vulnerable. But as his physical health improved, a different kind of pain began to gnaw at him, the weight of his past actions. Lying in his hospital bed, Mr. Davies couldn't help but reflect on how he had treated Lucas and Abigail over the years. The harsh words, the public ridicule, the efforts to turn the town against them. It all came flooding back, filling him with shame. He watched as Lucas made his rounds, tirelessly caring for patients with a kindness that seemed almost superhuman. 
The very man he had mocked and belittled was now the reason he was alive. The irony wasn't lost on Mr. Davies, and it made his guilt even more unbearable. As Lucas approached his bed for the daily checkup, Mr. Davies felt his heart racing. He knew he needed to say something, to apologize, but the words seemed to stick in his throat. How could he possibly make amends for years of cruelty? How are you feeling today, Mr. Davies? Lucas asked, his voice gentle and professional. Mr. Davies swallowed hard, his eyes welling up with tears. I, I don't deserve your kindness, Lucas, he stammered, his voice barely above a whisper. Lucas paused, looking at the older man with surprise. I've been terrible to you and your mother, Mr. Davies continued, his voice cracking with emotion. All these years, I, I was so wrong. The things I said, the way I treated you both. Tears began to roll down Mr. Davies' cheeks as he struggled to find the right words. You could have turned me away and no one would have blamed you. But you didn't. You saved my life, Lucas. Mr. Davies reached out, grasping Lucas's hand. I'm so sorry, he sobbed. Can you ever forgive me? I know I don't deserve it, but please. I'm so, so sorry. Lucas looked at Mr. Davies, his eyes filled with compassion. He gently squeezed the older man's hand, a small gesture of comfort that spoke volumes. Mr. Davies, Lucas said softly, I forgive you. The words hung in the air, heavy with meaning. Mr. Davies blinked, tears still streaming down his face, as if he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Lucas continued, his voice steady and kind. My mother taught me that forgiveness isn't just for the person who wronged you. It's also for yourself. It allows you to let go of the hurt and move forward. He paused, taking a deep breath. As a doctor, my job is to help people, no matter who they are or what they've done in the past. That's what I've always wanted to do, and that's what I'll continue to do. Mr. Davies shook his head in disbelief. I don't deserve this kindness, he whispered. It's not about deserving, Lucas replied. It's about doing what's right. And right now, what's right is helping you get better. Mr. Davies nodded, a look of determination crossing his face. I promise you, Lucas, I'll make this right. I'll change. I'll tell everyone how wrong I was about you and your mother. As the days passed, Mr. Davies kept his word. Once he was well enough to leave the clinic, he began spreading the word about Lucas's incredible work. He spoke to anyone who would listen about how Lucas had saved not just his life, but the lives of countless others in the town. Slowly but surely, the town's perception of Lucas began to shift. People who had once crossed the street to avoid him now stopped to shake his hand and thank him. The clinic, once empty and quiet, was now bustling with activity as more and more people sought Lucas's care. Lucas noticed the change, but he remained the same compassionate, dedicated doctor he had always been. He treated everyone with equal care and respect, just as he had done from the beginning. One afternoon, as Lucas was finishing up his rounds, he overheard a conversation between two patients in the waiting room. You know, one of them said, I used to think of him as just the adopted boy from out of town, but now he's more than a doctor. He's our savior. As the town continued to recover from the devastating illness, Lucas's clinic remained a beacon of hope and healing. The once empty waiting room now bustled with activity, filled with patients seeking treatment and follow-up care. But unlike before, the atmosphere had completely transformed. Where there was once coldness and suspicion, now there was warmth and gratitude. Patients smiled at Lucas as he moved from room to room, their eyes filled with respect and admiration. The change was palpable, and it touched Lucas's heart deeply. Abigail, ever-present and supportive, managed the flow of patience with grace and efficiency. Her warm smile and gentle words brought comfort to those still battling the aftermath of the illness. She moved through the clinic, a steady presence that complemented Lucas's medical expertise perfectly. Mrs. Thompson, how are you feeling today? Abigail asked, helping an elderly woman to a chair. Much better, dear, Mrs. Thompson replied, patting Abigail's hand. Thanks to you, 
And that wonderful son of yours? Abigail beamed with pride. Lucas is doing what he's always dreamed of doing, helping people. As Lucas finished with a patient, he caught his mother's eye across the room. They shared a smile, a moment of silent understanding passing between them. Their bond, always strong, had only grown deeper through this ordeal. Later, during a rare quiet moment, Lucas found Abigail organizing supplies in the back room. He leaned against the doorframe, watching her work. Mom, he said softly, I couldn't have done any of this without you. Abigail turned, her eyes shining with unshed tears. Oh, Lucas, she replied, you've always had this strength inside you. I just helped you see it. Lucas crossed the room and enveloped his mother in a tight hug. They stood there for a moment, the years of struggle and perseverance culminating in this triumph of love and acceptance. As they pulled apart, Abigail cupped Lucas's face in her hands. I'm so proud of you, son, she whispered. You've shown this town what true compassion looks like. Lucas nodded, his own eyes misty. We did it together, Mom, just like we always have. As word spread of Lucas's tireless efforts and Abigail's unwavering support, the townspeople began to reflect on their past behavior. Shame and regret washed over many, but it was quickly replaced by a desire to make amends and help their neighbors. One sunny morning, a group of volunteers arrived at the clinic led by Mr. Davies. They came with food, supplies, and most importantly, open hearts. Dr. Lucas, Mr. Davies said, his voice thick with emotion. We're here to help. Tell us what you need. Lucas, surprised and touched, looked at the eager faces before him. Thank you, he said softly. We could use help with patient care and cleaning. The volunteers quickly got to work. Some assisted Abigail in comforting patients, while others helped Lucas with basic medical tasks. The clinic hummed with activity, filled with the sounds of laughter and conversation. As days passed, more townspeople joined the effort. The clinic became a hub of community spirit, with people from all walks of life working together. Lucas watched in awe as former critics now worked side by side with him, their prejudices forgotten. Abigail couldn't help but smile as she saw the change in the town. She watched as Lucas interacted with the volunteers, his kindness and patience touching everyone he met. The love and acceptance she had always hoped for her son was finally becoming a reality. One evening, as Lucas and Abigail were closing up the clinic, they found a group of townspeople waiting outside. Mrs. Johnson, the town's baker, stepped forward with a large cake. We wanted to thank you both, she said, her eyes brimming with tears. You've shown us what it truly means to be a community. Lucas and Abigail were overwhelmed by the gesture. As they looked at the faces around them, they saw not strangers or adversaries, but friends and neighbors. The town that had once rejected them now embraced them wholeheartedly. Few days passed, the town hall was packed to the brim, every seat filled and people standing along the walls. The air was thick with anticipation as Mayor Johnson called the meeting to order. Lucas and Abigail sat near the back, still unsure of their place in this gathering. We've been through a lot these past weeks, the mayor began, his voice solemn. The flood, the disease, it's tested us in ways we never imagined. But we've come out stronger, thanks to two very special people among us. A murmur rippled through the crowd as all eyes turned to Lucas and Abigail. Mrs. Thompson, the town's elderly librarian, stood up shakily. I'd like to say something, she said, her voice quavering. Dr. Lucas, Abigail, I was wrong about you both. You saved my life, and I can never thank you enough. One by one, others stood up. The baker, the schoolteacher, the postman, each shared a story of how Lucas had helped them or their loved ones. Abigail wiped tears from her eyes as Lucas squeezed her hand. Then Mr. Davies rose from his seat. The room fell silent. He walked to the front, his steps slow and deliberate. Turning to face the crowd, his eyes found Lucas and Abigail. Lucas, Abigail, he began, his voice thick with emotion. I owe you both more than I can ever repay. For years I led this town in treating you with cruelty and prejudice. I was wrong, so very wrong. Mr. Davies paused, taking a shaky breath. 
You had every right to turn your back on us when we needed help, but you didn't. You showed us what true compassion looks like. I stand here today to apologize from the bottom of my heart for every harsh word, every unkind action, every moment of pain I caused you. The town listened in stunned silence, many wiping away tears. Mr. Davies continued, his voice growing stronger. I ask for your forgiveness, though I know I don't deserve it, and I vow to spend the rest of my days making amends not just to you, but to this entire community. Lucas stood up slowly, his eyes meeting Mr. Davies' tear-filled gaze. The room held its breath, waiting for his response. He cleared his throat, his voice steady and kind. Thank you, Mr. Davies, and everyone else who's spoken. Your words mean a lot to me and my mother, Lucas said, glancing at Abigail with a soft smile. But I want you all to understand something. I didn't do what I did for recognition or praise. I did it because it was the right thing to do. He paused, looking around the room. Being a doctor isn't about getting thanks. It's about helping people when they need it most. That's all I've ever wanted to do. Abigail watched her son with pride shining in her eyes. She remembered the little boy who dreamed of making a difference, now standing tall as a man who had done just that. Mayor Johnson stepped forward. Dr. Lucas, we understand that, and that's exactly why we want to make sure your clinic remains a vital part of our community. We've taken you for granted for too long. That ends today. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the crowd. Mr. Thompson, the town's banker, stood up. I propose we set up a fund to support the clinic. It's the least we can do after all you've done for us. Others quickly chimed in with offers of help. The hardware store owner volunteered to repair and upgrade the clinic building. The local grocery promised to keep the clinic stocked with supplies. Lucas looked overwhelmed by the outpouring of support. Abigail reached out and squeezed his hand, her eyes glistening with happy tears. We may have started out as outsiders, Abigail said her voice filled with emotion. But you've shown us today that love and compassion can truly change hearts. Thank you all for embracing us and our little clinic. The town hall erupted in applause, the sound of hands clapping mingling with sniffles and words of appreciation. Lucas and Abigail stood there, surrounded by the warmth of a community that had finally opened its arms to them. As the floodwaters receded and the town began to recover, Lucas saw an opportunity to improve his clinic with the newfound support of the community, he set out to expand and upgrade the facilities that had served as a lifeline during the crisis. Early one morning, Lucas stood outside the clinic surveying the building with a critical eye. He envisioned additional rooms, better equipment, and a more welcoming space for patients. As he sketched out his ideas, Mr. Thompson, the town's carpenter, approached him. Morning, Doc, Mr. Thompson called out. Heard you're looking to spruce up the place. Count me in. Lucas smiled gratefully. Thanks, Mr. Thompson, I appreciate it. Word spread quickly, and soon a steady stream of volunteers arrived, eager to help. Abigail took charge, organizing the efforts with her characteristic warmth and efficiency. She assigned tasks, coordinated schedules, and made sure everyone felt valued. All right, folks, Abigail announced to the gathered volunteers. Let's make this clinic something we can all be proud of. The sound of hammers and saws filled the air as work began. Walls came down and new ones went up, expanding the clinic's capacity. Fresh paint brightened the rooms and new flooring was laid. Local businesses donated supplies, from lumber to medical equipment. Lucas worked alongside the volunteers, his heart swelling with gratitude. He watched as Mr. Davies, still recovering from his illness, insisted on helping despite his weakened state. The two men worked side by side, their past differences forgotten as they focused on the task at hand. As the days passed, the clinic transformed. New examination rooms were added, providing more privacy for patients. A spacious waiting area took shape, filled with comfortable chairs donated by the local furniture store. The pharmacy was expanded, ensuring a better stock of essential medicines. Abigail oversaw the creation of a small garden at the clinic's entrance, filled with colorful flowers and soothing greenery. A bit of nature can do wonders for healing, she explained to anyone who would listen. The entire town seemed to rally around the clinic's renovation. It became more than just a building project. It was a symbol of their newfound unity and resilience. 
People who had once avoided the clinic now took pride in its transformation, seeing it as a representation of their own change of heart. As the clinic renovation progressed, Mr. Davies, now fully recovered from his illness, approached Lucas with a determined look in his eyes. Lucas, he said, his voice filled with sincerity. I want to do more than just hammer nails. I want to make a real difference. Lucas looked at him curiously. What did you have in mind, Mr. Davies? Mr. Davies pulled out a checkbook from his pocket. I'd like to donate funds to improve the medical resources here. We need better equipment, more supplies. You name it, I'll make it happen. Lucas was taken aback by the gesture. That's incredibly generous of you, Mr. Davies. Thank you. Mr. Davies shook his head. No thank you, Lucas. You saved my life when you had every reason not to. It's the least I can do. Word of Mr. Davies' donation spread quickly through the town. At the next town meeting, he stood up and addressed the crowd. Folks, I've been wrong for a long time. This clinic, and the good people running it, are a blessing to our community. I'm donating to help improve it, and I encourage all of you to do the same, in whatever way you can. His words struck a chord with many in the audience. People who had once turned their backs on Lucas now approached him, offering support and resources. Some donated money, while others offered their skills and time. As the days passed, Lucas and Mr. Davies found themselves working side by side more often. They discussed plans for the clinic, shared stories, and even joked together. An unlikely bond began to form between them, built on mutual respect and the shared experience of healing, both physical and emotional. One afternoon, as they took a break from painting, Mr. Davies turned to Lucas. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm glad you came back to this town, Lucas. You've taught us all a valuable lesson about forgiveness and compassion. Lucas smiled, feeling a warmth in his heart. And you've shown that it's never too late to change, Mr. Davies. That's a powerful message for everyone. The newly restored clinic stood as a beacon of hope in the small town. Its freshly painted walls and gleaming equipment were a testament to the community's newfound unity and purpose. Lucas and Abigail arrived early each morning, greeted by the warm smiles of patients waiting outside. As Lucas opened the doors, he felt a surge of pride. This was more than just a medical facility. It was a symbol of forgiveness and healing. Patients streamed in, some for checkups, others for treatment, but all carried with them a sense of gratitude that filled the air. Mrs. Wilson, an elderly woman who had once crossed the street to avoid Lucas, now sat in the waiting room, chatting amiably with other patients. When her name was called, she beamed at Lucas. Thank you, Dr. Lucas, she said, her eyes misty. Not just for treating my arthritis, but for showing us what true kindness looks like. Abigail, manning the reception desk, overheard the exchange and felt her heart swell with pride for her son. She watched as person after person came through, each with a similar story of transformation. Mr. Davies, now a regular volunteer at the clinic, helped organize medical supplies. He worked alongside teenagers from the high school, teaching them about community service and the importance of acceptance. The sight of the once prejudiced man now leading by example was a powerful reminder of how far the town had come. Outside the clinic, the effects of the change were equally visible. Neighbors who had once been distant now checked in on each other regularly. The town square, once a place of whispered gossip, now buzzed with the sound of friendly conversation and laughter. At the local diner, a group of townspeople discussed plans for a community garden behind the clinic. It'll be good for folks waiting on appointments, one man suggested. Plus, we can use the vegetables for those who need a little extra help. The idea spread quickly and soon volunteers were clearing the land ready to plant seeds of sustenance and solidarity. It was as if the town itself was healing, growing stronger and more vibrant with each passing day. As Lucas sat in his office at the end of another busy day, he gazed out the window at the bustling town square. The sight of people chatting and laughing together, regardless of their differences, brought a warm smile to his face. He closed his eyes, reflecting on the incredible journey that had led him to this moment. He remembered the lonely boy he once was, shunned by his classmates and their families. 
The sting of rejection had been a constant companion throughout his childhood. Yet, through it all, there had been one unwavering source of love and support, his mother Abigail. Lucas's thoughts drifted to the countless nights Abigail had held him as he cried, confused by the cruelty of others. Her gentle words echoed in his mind. Love, Lucas. Love is always the answer. Even when it's hard. Especially when it's hard. He opened his eyes, his gaze falling on a framed photo of Abigail on his desk. Her kind eyes and warm smile reminded him of the strength she had instilled in him. Without her guidance, Lucas knew he might have become bitter, unable to see past his own pain. Instead, Abigail had taught him the power of forgiveness. She had shown him that holding on to anger only hurt himself, while forgiveness could heal not just his own heart, but others as well. It was this lesson that had allowed Lucas to open his clinic doors to everyone during the town's darkest hour, even to those who had once scorned him. A soft knock on the door interrupted his thoughts. Abigail peeked in, her face glowing with pride. Ready to head home, sweetheart? She asked. Lucas stood up and embraced his mother tightly. Mom, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. I couldn't have done any of this without you. You taught me how to love when it seemed impossible. Abigail's eyes welled up with tears as she cupped her son's face in her hands. Oh, Lucas, she said softly. You've always had that love inside you. I just helped you see it. The town square buzzed with excitement as people gathered for a special celebration. Colorful banners hung from lampposts, and the air was filled with the aroma of freshly baked treats. At the center of it all stood Lucas and Abigail, looking slightly overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and gratitude. Mayor Johnson stepped up to the microphone, his voice booming across the square. Today we come together to honor two extraordinary individuals who saved our town in its darkest hour. Dr. Lucas and his mother Abigail showed us the true meaning of compassion and forgiveness. The crowd erupted in applause and Lucas felt a lump form in his throat. He glanced at Abigail, who squeezed his hand reassuringly. One by one, townspeople took the stage to share their stories. Mrs. Jenkins, whose son Lucas had treated during the epidemic, wiped tears from her eyes as she spoke. I was one of those who judged Lucas harshly, she admitted. But when my boy was sick, Dr. Lucas didn't hesitate to help. He saved my son's life and I'll never forget that. Mr. Davies, once Lucas's harshest critic, stood up next. His voice shook with emotion as he addressed the crowd. I was wrong, he said simply. I let prejudice blind me to the goodness in Lucas and Abigail's hearts. They taught me what true strength looks like. As more people shared their stories, laughter and tears mingled in the air. The town's band struck up a lively tune, and children danced in the square, their faces painted with bright colors. Finally, Mayor Johnson called Lucas and Abigail to the stage. The entire town rose to their feet, giving them a standing ovation that seemed to last forever. Lucas felt his eyes well up with tears, overwhelmed by the outpouring of love. The mayor presented them with a beautiful plaque, engraved with words of gratitude. For your unwavering dedication and extraordinary service to our community, he read aloud, we are forever grateful. As the celebration continued in full swing, Lucas and Abigail quietly slipped away from the crowd. They found a peaceful spot under an old oak tree at the edge of the square its branches providing a gentle canopy above them. The sounds of laughter and music drifted over, but here they had a moment of calm. Abigail looked at her son, her eyes shining with pride and love. Oh, Lucas, she said softly, reaching out to touch his cheek. Look at how far you've come. I always knew you'd change the world, starting right here in our little town. Lucas felt a warmth spread through his chest at his mother's words. He took her hand in his, marveling at how small and delicate it felt, yet knowing the strength it held. Mom, he said, his voice thick with emotion, I couldn't have done any of this without you. Your love, your support, it's been my guiding light all these years. Abigail smiled, her eyes crinkling at the corners. I just showed you the way, sweetheart. You're the one who walked the path. Lucas shook his head feeling a lump form in his throat. 
No, Mom. You did so much more than that. When the whole world seemed against us, you stood tall. You taught me how to love, how to forgive. Without you, I wouldn't be the man I am today. Tears welled up in Abigail's eyes as she listened to her son's heartfelt words. She pulled him into a tight hug, feeling the same overwhelming love she had felt when she first held him as a baby. Oh, my sweet boy, she whispered. You've always had a beautiful heart. I'm just so grateful I got to be the one to nurture it. As they held each other, the weight of their journey settled around them. The years of struggle, the pain of rejection, and now, finally, the joy of acceptance. It all seemed to crystallize in this moment of quiet reflection. As the weeks passed, the town's transformation became more evident with each passing day. Lucas and Abigail found themselves at the center of a community that had once pushed them to the fringes. Now, as they walked down Main Street, they were greeted with warm smiles and friendly waves from every direction. Good morning, Dr. Lucas, called Mrs. Wilson from her newly repainted porch. Thank you again for checking on my Arthur yesterday. Lucas smiled and waved back. It's my pleasure, Mrs. Wilson. How's he feeling today? Much better thanks to you, she replied cheerfully. Abigail squeezed Lucas's arm, her heart swelling with pride. They continued their walk, marveling at the sight of neighbors helping each other rebuild homes and businesses. The sound of hammers and saws filled the air, punctuated by laughter and friendly chatter. As they passed the town square, they saw Mr. Davies directing a group of volunteers who were planting new trees. He caught sight of them and waved enthusiastically. Lucas! Abigail! Come see what we're doing! They made their way over and Mr. Davies beamed at them. We're planting these trees as a symbol of our new beginning, he explained. And look, he pointed to a small plaque at the base of one sapling. We've dedicated this one to you both. Lucas and Abigail leaned in to read the inscription. In honor of Dr. Lucas and Abigail, whose love and forgiveness taught us to grow together. Tears welled up in Abigail's eyes as she read the words. Lucas put his arm around her shoulders feeling a deep sense of peace wash over him. As they continued their walk, they saw countless examples of the town's newfound unity. People who had once avoided eye contact with them now stopped to chat and express their gratitude. The clinic, once empty and ignored, now bustled with activity as people came not just for medical care but for advice and companionship. Lucas and Abigail knew that their journey had not been easy, but as they looked at their transformed community, they realized that every hardship had led to this moment. The power of forgiveness and love had not just changed their lives, but had reshaped the very heart of their town. If you enjoyed the story of Lucas and Abigail, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.